Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'd like to talk about perseverance, specifically how not giving up can produce a greater contentment in each of our lives. You know, conventional wisdom suggests that we find contentment when everything goes our way or when we feel all our needs are met or when we have most of the things that we desire. But how many of us can actually say we live day by day having most of what we desire or all of our needs met. Biographies, including biblical histories, reveals a very different story. Are you ready for this? Contentment oftentimes is found in the struggles of life when faced with difficult situations. You see, it's in these moments we have to make a choice. Do I quit? Do I give up? Or do I move? Do I press on? Do I keep going? There's something about forward momentum that produces a contentment within our spirit, a feeling of satisfaction and happiness regardless of circumstances. Harvard Business Review studied the rank and file employees a few years ago and asked, what's the one variable that produces the greatest degree of satisfaction? Surprisingly, it was not money or bonuses or time off. But it was when employees sensed that forward progress was occurring. Here's the bottom line, friends. Are you ready for this? It's real simple. As I have watched in my own life, in the lives of others, as I have read about the struggles of others, I've seen one thing come to the forefront. You persevere until things get better. That's what produces contentment. You keep going. You keep moving forward, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the surroundings, regardless of the storm. You persevere, you keep standing until things get better. Consider a few inspiring stories of those who persevered. These are some of my favorites. Jack Canfield, he's the creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul. That's a tremendous series. And this motivator and best-selling author along with his co-author, Mark Victor Hansen. They pitched the chicken soup idea to 130 publishers. Not one was interested. In fact, after the first 100 pitches, their agent even dropped them, but they never gave up. A small publisher in Florida eventually picked up the book. Today, over 250 chicken soup for the soul books, over 500 million copies sold worldwide. How about Howard Schultz? He went to 200 banks to secure a loan for his dream. His dream, a coffee house. His wife was pregnant at the time with their first child and he was getting rejected day after day after day. Following years of rejection, he finally secured a loan for $400,000 from two other investors. Today, Starbucks is one of the most recognizable brands globally. Nearly 17,000 locations in 40 countries and Schultz is worth nearly $3 billion. Bottom line, persevere, 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 persevere until things get better. I love the story of J.K. Rowling, divorced, single mother, government assistance. 13 publishers said no to her manuscript idea, but everything changed when a publisher's daughter read her book, Harry Potter, which is now a seven volume fantasy series. It's sold over 600 million copies. It's been translated in 84 languages. It has spawned a global media empire, including films and video games. She was worth billions, but she's given so much money away. She's now worth a measly hundreds of millions of dollars. How about Truett Cathy? If you don't know the name, you definitely know the brand. He starts a restaurant with his brother in 1946. Sadly, his brother is killed in an airplane crash a few years later. Then he opens a second restaurant in 1951. Fire destroyed it a year later. While rebuilding after the fire, doctors find polyps in his colon. No cancer, but 
he gets and receives a terrible allergic reaction to all the medicines. But that doesn't stop him. Despite the fact that he wanted to stop, that he wanted to give up, that he wanted to quit, his wife, Jeanette, stepped in. He said, I was 38 years old. I did not expect to come home from the hospital alive. But my wife said, God isn't finished with your life yet. And Kathy said, that just gave me the strength I needed to continue standing. That was nearly 60 years ago. Today, Truett Kathy is known for building a billion dollar empire on a chicken sandwich. Yep, he didn't quit, he didn't give up, and he's given the world a restaurant called Chick-fil-A. How about Thomas Edison? Failed over a thousand times in his quest to invent the light bulb, but he said, I thought I was failing, but I was actually finding a way a thousand times over how not to build a light bulb. Thomas Edison kept moving forward. Persevere until things get better. Friends, one of my favorite stories is about Winston Churchill. Did you know that Churchill failed eighth grade English three years in a row? And ironically, in 1941, right in the midst of World War II, he gets an invitation from his alma mater. That's right. Harold School, a boarding school outside of London. He gets this invitation to deliver the commencement address. Now, it's October 1941, right? So Churchill is speaking in the context of a tenuous military climate in the world. You've heard the speech, I'm sure. There are many variations of it, but there's only one central theme. So Churchill rises from his seat, has a big black coat that he removes, removes his custom Hamburg hat, sets aside his walking cane, takes the cigar out of his mouth, and stands for what seems like minutes, but it's only seconds. Then he opens his mouth and he says three words, never give up. He paused, looked around, waited for a few moments, and then continued, never, 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 never give up. Then he took his hat, his coat, his cane, grabbed his cigar, relit the stogie, and left. Come here for a moment, friends. Never give up. Never, never, never give up. Don't ever let it be said that you quit. That message was cemented into me years ago by the wisest man I ever met in my life, my daddy, a third grade dropout. The scene, a funeral home. We're in front of the casket of my first wife, Trina. I'm holding the hands of our two little boys. Trina had died of breast cancer after a six year battle. And I looked at my father and I said, Dad, I've lost hope. My father's response, a third grade dropout, no formal education. His response, son, you can't lose something that God gave you. You haven't lost hope, you've lost perspective. Now, son, just stand. In essence, what daddy was saying to his son on that day, the worst day of my life, were these words, never, never, never give up. Now, I could have given up, but you see, I grew up with a mom who said, trust God, regardless of the storm. I grew up with a daddy that said, we don't quit in this family, regardless of circumstances. What am I saying to you this day? Persevere, friends. Persevere until things get better. Let me land this plane by bringing this point home. I wanna introduce you to somebody, a person who just makes a cameo appearance in the Bible, but her life has a major impact in world history. Her name is Leah. Many of you know the biblical story in the Old Testament of Leah and Jacob. In case you don't, here's a quick summary. Jacob was a trickster. You remember, he disguised himself as his older brother Esau to deceive his elderly father Isaac to get the blessing of the firstborn. When his brother Esau hears about this, he's furious, threatens to kill his brother Jacob. So Jacob fled to his uncle Laban's house. So now the fugitive Jacob is on the run. While he's on his way to his uncle Laban's house, he spots this woman named Rachel at a well. He's mesmerized by her beauty. She's so fine that the Bible says that Jacob wept when he met her. He asked her dad, his uncle Laban, for her hand in marriage. 
Jacob agreed to serve seven years, seven years in order to marry Rachel. So the wedding takes place. Jacob is married. He's in the family, but he's consummated his marriage with the wrong woman, Leah. He discovers that the next morning after the marriage. He goes to his father-in-law and he goes, Uncle Laban, what is this that you have done? You see, while Jacob was a trickster, his uncle Laban, his now father-in-law, was also a trickster. Laban was the original OG, if you know what I mean. Listen to what Laban said. The practice in our place is to marry off the older before the younger. So complete this task at hand, and I'll give you Rachel for the service of another seven years. In other words, Jacob, you're on the run. You stole what was not yours. You took from your brother. But in my house, we play by the rules. You want Rachel? Stay married to Leah, but give me another seven years and I'll give you Rachel. But what about Leah in all of this? She's an innocent bystander. She's objectified, marginalized, looked over, reduced. She's tolerated while Rachel is loved. Safe to say, She's second choice. While Rachel was beautiful and loved and preferred according to scripture, Leah was unloved and not first choice. But how many of you know that God doesn't like when his children are mistreated? He especially doesn't like when his children are abused and separated and segregated and disinherited and disconnected. So God responded by giving Leah some children to meet her difficult situation. Listen carefully. Among her, all of her children, Leah had a son named Reuben and another son named Simeon and a son named Levi and a son named Judah. Some of you are listening to me right now and you're ready to quit. You're ready to give up. Let me speak to you as Pastor Rick for a moment. Take a clue from Leah's life. All she did simply and unwittingly was to persevere until things got better. No, she wasn't Jacob's first choice. Many would say she wasn't even Jacob's best choice. I don't know how God does it, but he can create the best through second choices. Leah's children once again included Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Do you have any idea, according to Old Testament scripture, who showed up from the lineage of Judah? I'm glad you asked. Judah, Obed, Jesse, David, Jesus. Leah teaches that often second choice in our lives is God's best choice for us. I've got to continue this discussion in a future podcast. It's an episode that I've titled Perseverance 2.0. Be on the lookout for it. Well, that's going to do for this episode. Until we meet again, I want you to persevere until things get better. This is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audio book right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.